Well, we have a hooking device. It's uh, a, a Tiemco 200 RBL, which is a barbless. And we'll start by clipping off a little bit of uh, some elk hair for a tail. And as you can see, we've got some short hairs and some long hairs in here. So we pull out the short ones. And there's always a lot of them in there. And that leaves us with a clump like this, which we're going to stack. So it goes in the stacker. Tap it on down so the tips are all the same length. And that's going to be our tail. We position the thread at about the 60% mark. And our tail should be fairly short. Start that off. Secure it down back toward the end of the hook. Take a few more secure turns, and the tail is in place. Now, as we're trimming off all these little butt ends, try to grab them all in your finger and make one angled cut, nice and clean. All right, now we are ready for a rib, which will secure our hackle in place. So we just tie that fine wire on there. And the dubbing comes next. And this is a fly that you can tie any color. I'm going to do a yellow one, which can represent oh, some stoneflies and some caddis, some hoppers. So we just take a little bit of thread out, and we're just kind of changing the color of the thread, actually. And we just wind that around here, nice and sparse and level so as not to make a fat, lumpy body. You know, spread it out some on the, on the thread before you dub it on. And we just work our way up the body here a little bit further. Just takes a little bit more to finish this off. And now we're at about the 60% mark on the hook. So we select out a saddle hackle. And this is a brown with a black center, which is referred to as a furnace. And I like to have a little bit of black in the center there. It kind of breaks up the pattern of the color. And so strip off a few fibers there on the edge. And um, tie it in so that the shiny side is facing away from you. So start spiraling that hackle toward the rear of the hook. Take a couple turns here in the front, and then over the top and hold it. Very efficient. Over and hold it. Come over and hold it. Over and hold it. Now to secure it in place, we're going to use this fine wire rib. So we bring the wire around and catch that hackle tip, and just bring it on forward, securing the hackle in place providing maybe a little flash and a lot of uh, durability. We'll tie this off up on front. Then we'll trim off this hackle tip nice and close. Tip of your scissors. And this is hard on scissors, but we'll just trim that wire anyway. Okay, now we are ready for the wing, which will be some white elk. So we'll cut a piece of that out like we did for the tail. We'll pull out all those short little fuzzy fibers, which just get in the way and slow down the stacking process. Drop those tips in the stacker. A few good taps, and we have a wing ready to go. We'll pull out a few of those short ones the other direction now. And this will be our wing. And it should extend about to the bend of the hook. So if you hold it in your right hand and you measure the distance, change hands, come up between the fingers, secure it in place, you have a wing. Now all these 
little fibers here on the ends of the hair can be rather unruly but if you can sweep them all between your fingers and make one clean cut kind of at an angle see if we can get them all here some are kind of short well, I will be set. Ah, I missed a couple of them. So we'll just fix them up there. And just build up a good little thread base here where we're going to uh, tie in our thorax and our rubber legs. Now, you know, if you're fishing in the Rocky Mountains, you need to have rubber legs. At least that's what all of the locals tell you. So we'll just trim off a couple pieces of rubber here. And we'll tie one section in away from you. Kind of on the far side of the hook. About like so. And one on the other side. Like so. We'll have a little plumbered hackle through the thorax, so we have some grizzly here. And again, we'll just strip off some of the fibers on the end. And we'll tie it in with the shiny side away from us. Okay, so now we are ready to install the thorax. And this will be a fluorescent kind of a fire uh, red thorax. And you can uh, use whatever you feel like on this, but it's, uh, it helps if you have something fine that uh, dubs on real thin and easy. You can see how fast this rolls onto the thread. If you just uh, roll your fingers the same direction and put lots of pressure in there, you'll have no trouble with your dubbing, as long as you don't put on too much. So now we're going to finish off this thorax. Stroke those rubber legs out of the way. And leave some space for the head. You don't want to crowd the eye of the hook too much. Okay, now we're ready to wrap the grizzly hackle. So we just take a turn behind those, or in front of the, the rubber. And we just palmer this on through the fly. Sometimes that rubber gets in the way, so we just pull it out. So again, we can just wrap over the top and hold it. Come over and hold it. Now as we tie it off, just bring the thread behind there, take a couple secure turns, put the tip of the scissors right on the hook shank and make one clean cut. And a few more turns of thread and a couple half hitches up front. Then we'll cinch them back nice and tight. And we have a rubber leg stimulator. Pretty much ready to go to work except that we want to even up the legs a little bit. And you can kind of manhandle them around to position them right. And then what I like to do is to lift up the wing tall, spread it out wide so that you have a nice wide uh, silhouette from below. And the same on the tail, spread it out wide, which helps kind of stabilize the fly and gives it a broad silhouette from the underside. I'll just take this out here. Maybe we can get a little view of that. Can we see that on the underside? I think we can see that, that uh, the wing is spread out uh, wide and it is tall. Now it's time to take it fishing, you know, Jack?